Not looking forward to this one. The top two records in the league colliding on a sensational October evening in Calgary. It's the season series tiebreaker between the Rough Riders and Stampeders at McMahon. First time in six years that both these teams are facing each other after a loss for Bo Levi Mitchell. It was against the BC Lions, the first one they dropped at home. But don't be fooled. His home record, 24-2 and two in his last 26 starts and 8-2 and two against the Riders. That clears once to bounce back from a tough game against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers where the offense for Saskatchewan registered just 12 first downs. But the good news is he's 7-2 and two in his last nine starts. Chris Jones Riders actually have the most wins in the league since week seven and the best record within the division as they try to maintain hopes of a first place finish. And there's Dave Dickinson and Stan Peters can clinch first in the West for a third consecutive year. Fourth in five with a win, even a tie will get that done. The season series is tied. At a game of peace, Calgary won 34-22 in late July. Saskatchewan answered three weeks later, 40-27 victors. Both those games at Mosaic. What a sensational evening here in the foothills as Reddy Perez picks it off and we're underway. And it's Lucius Purifoy on the return. Up close to the 40-yard line, so he sets it up nicely for Zach Kalaris and the offense that has not had a touchdown in their last 35 possessions. Yeah, against the Bombers, of course, the 31-0 shutout, just 170 net yards for Saskatchewan in that game. I mentioned just 12 first downs. Zach Kalaris trying to bounce back from that. Does get one of his receivers back in the lineup, Jordan Williams Lambert. One game start for Calaris against Calgary. 270 yards in that game. And he'll go to the year right away. And he's got Shaq Evans, who is the favorite target now. The leader in receiving for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. A first down into St. Peter territory. Yeah, targeted more than any receiver for the Riders this year. 84 targets, 46 catches, over 700 yards. Gets things started with a nice curl route. And a first down, 26-yard gain for Shaq Evans. Just 12 first downs in that game against Winnipeg. And they begin the day with a streak of 145 minutes plus without a, a touchdown. Last touchdown, third quarter of the game against Montreal. Trey Mason, the ball carrier, as we set this retooled offense for you. Well, the second receiver on the chart behind Shaq Evans is Jordan Williams Lambert. He missed last week in the blowout against Winnipeg. He is back in the lineup and they need him. We'll be watching the interior of the old line. Josiah St. John's getting his first start of the season up against Micah Johnson. Labatt moves in for Dan Clark again. Second game. Second game for Philip Blake. We'll watch how that interior of the old line can handle this D-line in Calgary. In pass protection here, second and seven, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Caleb Hawley. And after the 26-yarder, the drive, drive stalls. And let's see what they elect to do on third down from the 43. Take a look in the key second down, exactly the route that Caleb Hawley ran. He was trying to run the big route, and Siante Evans cut him off. Probably too early to challenge that for Chris Jones, but one he may have won. It is louder, and he'll try a 50-yarder to get things underway, and he has the distance, and he's got the accuracy, and the Rough Riders strike first, and plenty of green-clad fans here at McMahon like the start. Great autumn day in Calgary. The red green game. And Bo Levi Mitchell now at the controls for the first time today. Seven touchdowns, two interceptions in the first two meetings of the year. And he'll hand it off to Don Jackson, who is fifth in the league in rushing as we set that. Calgary offensive alignment for you. Well, in at that right tackle spot is Neela Kasha Tati. We'll talk about him in a second. Chris Matthews gets his third start in the receiving core. Eric Rogers played last week but didn't practice with the team, was with his family. There's Kasha Tati at right tackle. 
He'll be up against Chad Jeter and Willie Jefferson in this one tonight. Stamps look at second and seven. Mitchell to throw. And what a ambles. Marquise Ambles incomplete. It's a two and out to start. And the punt team comes on. Wait a when you're on the road, you always want to start if you can get Bo Levi Mitchell in this offense in a 2 0 quickly and grab some early momentum. That's a good start for Saskatchewan. Rob Maver gets set for his 800th career punt. Shaq Evans and Kyron Moore are back. Evans has to backpedal. Feels it at the 20, a 52-yard punt. A seven-yard return by Evans. Patrick Levels on the special team tackle. Better start for Polaris today after a rough outing against Winnipeg. It really was. Eight of 19, 69 yards, two interceptions, a season low. Taylor Loeffler with a couple in that game. And not a good afternoon for Zach Polaris and the Ryder offense. 31-0 was the final score in that one. Only up. Can only go up from there. 9-2 and outs in that game. A net offense of 170 yards. A season low. Starting around the 28-yard line. And the handoff to Mason. A stutter step and a surge to the 32 for four yards. Take a look at the starting Calgary defense. There's the guy that I'm, I'm interested to watch go against Josiah St. John and Philip Blake. Micah Johnson with 11 sacks in behind Charleston Hughes in the league list. There's Alex Singleton that is tied with Adam Big Hill for the league lead in tackles with 101. And Brandon Smith missed last week is back in at halfback. I was going to say for all the changes on offense for both teams, that is the Calgary defense that started the year. And the one they want together, a pass behind the intended target, Patrick Lamois. And with that defense, we may see a lot of these two and out to today on both sides of the ball. Yeah, it's it could be a, a real defensive battle here tonight when you take a look at that matchup again in the interior, too, for Saskatchewan offensively. I think we're going to see a lot of quick game. Devon Claybrooks, I'm sure, will try to get Micah Johnson on Josiah St. John, see how... St. John can hold up with that matchup, and if he can't, then there'll be no choice for Zach Kalaros but to go to quick game. Romar Morris is back. Line drive punt by Josh Bartell. Picked up on the 32, and Morris gets loose. Romar Morris, open field, and nobody is going to catch him. It's another Calgary punt return touchdown. had a 78 yarder against Saskatchewan. Romar Morris just ripped off a 78 yard punt return score. Well, it's a big kick. Look when Morris gets his hands on the ball, how far away the cover team really is. They're 10 yards, the only two that are really in the picture. So he's got room to find the hole. He's got room to take a couple of moves and sidestep the first tackler or two and then find that seam and take off this the second kick return touchdown between these two teams for the Calgary Stampeders. Convert's good. The Rough Riders scrambling with a personnel adjustment that didn't get finished and a flag will fly and Convert good. Game one versus Saskatchewan. Terry Williams had a 78-yard kick return for a touchdown. Four punt return touchdowns for Calgary, and that's the eighth big return surrendered by the Rough Riders this year. So if it's going to be tough on offense, get the special teams going. That's what Romar Morris did, and Calgary leads. Two weeks. Yeah, because that's wow what the conditions were like a couple of weeks ago when the BC Lions were here. But a, I'm going to go old school and say about a foot of snow uh, 
good prior to that, but how about today? Just a sensational day, and we haven't had many of these at McMahon this year. Weather-wise, it hasn't been terrific, and the fans have certainly responded. Looks like the largest crowd of the year. Robar Morris responded, didn't he? Cameron Marshall in the lineup for the Rough Riders. Makes the first man miss, and he'll high step down the sidelines and cut back in. Got caught from behind. Maybe a touchdown saving tackle by Corey Greenwood, but it's a special team's track meet in this opening quarter. Marcus Thigpen scratch Cameron Marshall put on the roster and, and he says I, I got something for you too didn't get to the end zone like Morris but a nice return to grab some momentum seal block here kick out there make sure you open up a nice little running lane right down the sideline 58 yard return for Cameron Marshall on his return to the lineup well, the Riders start at the Stampeder 47. Laros, lots of time, but open target. And he's got Williams labored down at the 20-yard line. Cut down by Brandon Smith. Missed last week, comes back in. Remember, in game two against the Calgary Stampeders, he had the big game. That was his breakout game as a rough rider. 10 catches on 10 targets for 152 yards for Williams Lambert. Getting right back at it in this matchup. The rubber man. So first and ten. First trip to the red zone. And sack to throw. First read not open, and he throws over the middle, and it's knocked down. Defensive play made by the big defensive end, Jagarin Davis, who's got a couple of interceptions this year. Jim Murphy in charge of the game. You can see wearing ref cam. Be getting his bird's eye view throughout the day. Let's get some interesting looks at Micah Johnson from that camera. He's just on the other side of that old line right there. Second and ten. Short drop. Quick hitter. Open target. Williams labored once again. And he has a first down inside the five. Williams Lambert's going to run the quick out here. Timing route. Gets down the field and then breaks on the out. The timing is there. The throw is there. The coverage is off. And almost a zone look from Calgary, which is unusual in this part of the field. Two catches, 43 yards on the drive for JWL in a first and goal at the four. Trey Mason in the backfield. Shaq Evans lines up at the wingback spot. Mason straight ahead. Touchdown! First touchdown in 38 possessions. And the Rough Riders regain the lead. Yeah, you think the Riders needed that one? You bet they needed that. The Riders offensively 38 possessions, 35 coming into this game tonight without a score. And they finally cross that goal line. Trey Mason gets the job done. A couple good throws and catches to Jordan Williams Lambert. Our statistician Dave Moyer has had the stopwatch on them and it's the first touchdown in 152 minutes and 53 seconds. Martell the holder and Lowther on target for the convert. We had a 10-7 lead as Trey Mason four yards right up the middle to Painter. Well, all kinds of concerns on the old line, especially the interior guys. Brendan Labatt playing center out of position for him, but he goes one on one with Alex Singleton. He gets his man, then it's big on big to the left side of the formation right here. Look at them wash down the defensive line, running away from Micah Johnson and Trey Mason gets to the goal line. 
Four plays, 47 yards after the terrific kick return by Cameron Marshall. And speaking of returners, here's Morris. And he works his way across the 25, contained at the 28-yard line. Alex Gagne, another special team tackle. Take a look at the field angle of Trey Mason's touchdown. Zach Caleros, pivot, little ride to side, and his decision, give it to 10 down Main Street. Good choice. Calgary without a first quarter point in the previous two, yet seven on the punt return touchdown, but offensively, let's see if they can put up some first quarter points. Bounced outside, Don Jackson so shows you his quickness. A first down scamper outside for 13. Don Jackson didn't play in either of the games against Saskatchewan, so the Ryder defense don't really know his speed or his quickness. They're not going to know that until they play against him a few series, because you, you're not sure. You could see a guy on video, but until you get down there on the field, you just don't know how quick he is, and Don Jackson's one of the quickest. Fifth in the league in rushing. Coming off a of season low, 12 carries, 35 against BC. First down, trying to set up the screen, but it was snuffed out. There's Chad Jeter in the lineup on a more regular basis in place of Charleston Hughes. Yeah, Charleston Hughes, the news this week is was charged with a DUI and failure to give a breathalyzer test. So the club decided on Friday to sit him out this game, fine him the full amount for not living up to the code of contact with the football team. The Allegation is in the hands of the court right now, and for at least tonight, Chad Jeter will start in Charleston Hughes' position. Loss of six, second and 16. Mitchell going to air it out. He wants Chris Matthews. Great catch. Pulls it down at the Saskatchewan 50 in front of Luchas Gurafoy, who thought it, he'd been pushed off. Just a few catches for Chris Matthews, and you knew there'd be a moment where he started to become more comfortable in the Calgary offense, where Bo Levi Mitchell would get to know his body language a little better, how he runs routes, how he comes out of his breaks, where he likes the deep ball. And I'll tell you what, if you're unsure where he likes the deep ball, just throw it up there to big six foot five, 228 pounds. Chris Matthews, 27 yard gain there. That's his biggest reception since coming back to the league and now Jackson with speed finds another crease and runs for another first down and he's back into the Canadian Football League coming back from his time down south and against the BC Lions there's his three catches a couple drops in that game too as he's trying to sort of find his way and find that chemistry with Bo Levi Mitchell that it former rough rider Bakari Grant to the fold. He's not in the lineup today, but uh, another guy that Stan Peters are trying to get up to speed with all the injuries they've had at the receiver spot. They're going to feed Jackson the ball again. Nearly busted that. Another first down run. He's had three on this drive already. Yeah, one of the issues right now is that the Riders defensively aren't gang tackling Don Jackson. What they're trying to do is they take their gaps and they're waiting for one guy to make that tackle. Well, that's risky because Don Jackson and the good running backs in the league, all of them will make that first guy miss. Jackson, four carries, 39 yards. And he's got the attention of the Riders defense, including linebacker Cameron Judge. First down, Saskatchewan 25. Time for Mitchell. Crosser here. Wilmar Morris bounced off contact. The flag comes down. And Morris has another first down pending that flag. Would be a 13-yard gain. But the Stampeders are marching back. Illegal interference, blocking downfield prior to the pass. Calgary, number 83. It's a 10 yard penalty, remains first down. Penalty against Marquis Ambles. There he is right there in the bunch formation. 
And as long as the if the ball is thrown across the line of scrimmage, you can't block before it's thrown. If it's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, that block is okay. It's a screen play, but that ball was thrown across the line. No first and 20. Three-man rush. Mitchell on time, got an open target. Aaron Rodgers has the catch near the first down stick. Got 18, so go to first and 20. They're into second and short. Well, Chris, Chris Matthews and Eric Rodgers had three catches each in the loss to the BC Lions last week. But you know those two receivers are potential. Forget about 1,000-yard receivers. Yeah. How about 1,500-yard receivers? And it's just a matter of time before those two start to click with Mitchell. Good looking drive. Second and two. And it's Jackson around the side and he won't get there. Got cut down. Dropped for a loss. Looked like Creston Butler from the corner was the guy who shut it down. Now let's take another look at the run. Just to the right of your screen is, is Don Jackson. Takes it wide, trying to get the edge with Ucombre Williams blocking out in front, but you're right, Creston Butler getting the start here in this one tonight. He beats that block of the pulling lineman. And cuts down Jackson. That's impressive, got underneath the 300 pound center. So Rennie Paredes. Try to get this game tied up with that chip shot from 25 yards out. It's a good first quarter, two and a half minutes to go. Battle of the top two records of the league and they're tied to 10. More than a thousand yards of receiving totals in sick bay for the Calgary Stampeders than in the lineup. They've had to make a lot of adjustments with more on that. Here's Jermaine Franklin. Thanks, CC. Yes, it's been a struggle for Bo Levi Mitchell and his basically new receiving core. As you just said, it's been well documented. Four of the Stamps' top receivers have been injured and out of the lineup. Now, it's not just about learning about the, the playbook and running the right routes. It's also about running it the way that Bo Levi likes it to be done. And it's very important for him to know exactly what the receiver wants and vice versa. Bo Levi Mitchell did say that to me this week week as well as the fact that they had three full days of practice this week is better than what they had the previous week and you can tell already that you can see the chemistry slowly building but it will take time similar story for Saskatchewan without Naaman Roosevelt Kenny Shaw not in the lineup today Devin Bailey here's Polaris dumping it off for the speedy Kyra Moore looks like he is close to a first down let's call it nine and second and one but chris that graphic we showed just before that hit with bo levi mitchell and, and missing his receivers wow we're talking 60 percent of his yep. passing yards just over 60 percent of his touchdown throws not in the lineup and don't look like they will be so he has to find that chemistry with eric rogers and chris matthews short yardage and a sneak for a first down No, the offense looks like it has a little more jump for Chris Jones so far in this game. And he kept stressing, you know, there's been a lot of negativity around this team the last few weeks, especially after you get shut out by Winnipeg. But said you don't win 10 games at this point in the season unless you've got some talent. First and 10, another quick hitter to Moore. And Moore is wrong. And it's a foot race. And Kyra Moore is up in and around the 22-yard line. Trey Roberson got back, but it's a big play for the Rough Riders, who are back in scoring position after a 42-yarder. When the Saskatchewan Rough Riders played in Montreal, the Alouettes threw a whole bunch of blitz package at them, a whole bunch of extra men, and, and trying to get pressure on Zach Caleros. And Kyron Moore became the checkdown guy, the hot read. Had over 100 yards in that game. If it goes to quick game for Zach Kalaros here, don't be surprised to see Kyron Moore have a big game. Double punt there, got a damn 
Evans and Roberson the tackle. Another Rough Rider first down. It's been a crisp opening quarter for Polaris. A little scrum here. Brendan LaPat lost his helmet and Micah Johnson's into it early. Well, Josiah St. John and, and Micah Johnson went toe to toe there and, and Johnson didn't like what happened. Let's take a look. We have the ISO for you. There's Micah Johnson. Josiah St. John passes it off to his center, Labatt. Labatt didn't like Johnson up in the face and throwing his helmet off. Oh, it's on in the trenches. And Labatt will play without a helmet if he if he has to. So will he. Yep. <laughs> well, I, I, I suggest I just keep him on. Yeah, just keep him on. But we'll keep watching the battle. You got to. It's on down there. Looks like he wanted to go quarterback draw, nothing doing. And the fired up Mike Judd, oh, Cordero Law, excuse me, with his fourth sack of the year. Yeah, Ja'Gary Davis and Cordero Law got there. Good push up the middle. That was the final play of the opening quarter. How'd you like it? A lot of firepower, some big returns, Robar Morris. And a touchdown from Trey Mason. We're tied at 10. Rough Rider offense was decapped last week. It's espresso today. Uh, how about that first quarter? Yeah, 69 yards passing last week in the entire four-quarter game against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And they're over 130 yards in one quarter against a top-ranked Calgary defense. In fact, two top-ranked defenses going at it. And, boy, I'm loving this trench warfare that's going on in that first quarter. And you were watching that beforehand because of the changes at guard. And, in fact, Brendan Labatt playing out of position exactly playing center and you know he's a veteran so he can handle it in fact he'll be able to help Josiah St. John and Philip Blake you see a little blood on the shoulder yeah. pads already is there getting that battle going down in the trenches but Jagera Davis Cordero Law Micah Johnson up front that's a handful to give Davis the sack it's second and goal back at the 12 Johnson. You know Devon Claybrooks is going to dial up a lot of twists up front. You don't have to blitz to do this. Watch Micah Johnson right in the middle of your screen. Number four. He's going to step up, go around on the twist from Cordero Law who went inside. And boy, those guys trying to work together up on the offensive line are going to have to figure that out quickly. We'll trash talk it after the fact. Like he actually hooked around and grabbed the shoulder pads for the front. I know some fans might say, was that a horse collar? But it was just a look at Johnson overpowering. Well, let's yeah. steal goal from Lowther. Let's go back and take a look and see if it was a horse collar. I, 12, I didn't think so when I sacks. saw it live. Yeah. That's just the way he did it with one hand. You wondered if he grabbed at the shoulder, but just showing you how strong he is. There's the twist, comes around the edge without being blocked. I'll grab the outside of yeah. the shoulder pad and pulled him down from right. there. That's a little that. bit in front. No, that's that's fine. Front of the jersey, got the shirt sleeve and made the tackle. That's See what, what Kim Murphy saw. Yeah, it's not on the nameplate. Well, and, you and could, it wasn't on the helmet. And you could tell by the camera angle that he was looking right at the yep. hit. No flag. Well, he's fired up 12 sacks, six in the last three and a half games. He's just getting revved up. 13-10, Mitchell throwing in. That one was, looked like up for grabs for Derek Moncrief. The intended target had not turned to look. I think that was Richard Sindani. Blitz was coming from Mike Adam, and Bolivar Mitchell knew that he he didn't he didn't have a guy to block at him, so he had to throw it to that spot. And hope his receiver saw it coming. He didn't. Second and ten, and offside. Willie G. 
Jefferson out of the starting blocks too quickly. Sometimes he looks like he's offside because he gets such it's a great start. Number seven. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Let's, let's look at him coming out of his sprinter start. Right up here in that two-point stance. Now that time a little early. Antigua might have jumped two. Good call by the official there. A second and five. Opens things up a little bit. Bringing heat again. Yeah, that pass is complete. It's Lamar Durant with a first down catch at the 49-yard line. Lamar Durant, short side of the field, working with Eric Rogers. Or Eric Rogers runs the wheel route. He runs out quick in right at the first down mark. Third catch against Saskatchewan this year. First down stamps. And with the late handoff to Jackson, nothing doing. Off the corner, Nick Marshall stepped up and filled a hole and drops, excuse me, Romar Morris for a loss of two. Willie Jefferson was in the backfield quickly. I, I think he was the first issue that Don Jackson had to deal with. So into second and long. And a draw play to Jackson. Trying to kick it outside and couldn't turn it upfield. Got bumped up by Moncrief and Judge. And the punt team will have to come on for Calgary. Take a look here at Willie Jefferson. He he has the right angle. He's going to step into that hole, but then he does a swim move to go out and around it, thinking this was a pass play. Now take a look. Jefferson steps into the hole, then he swims his way right out of the hole, opening it up for a nice run from Don Jackson. Maver with the boot. Kyra Moore wanted that to bounce into the end zone. Maver had a little backspin on it. And they'll contain him inside the 10. And for Rob Maver, it's the 11th time he's hit it inside the 10 this year. But the Saskatchewan Rough Rider offense is in form today. 134 passing yards already for Polaris. Long field for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They'll start at the seven. Set up a screen here. It's Patrick Lavoie puts his head down and tries to pull his way for extra yardage up at the 15. He sets up second and short. Pickup of eight. Watch Brendan Labatt play Micah Johnson in the middle here. Labatt's the center, and he's going to snap it, make Micah Johnson, let him come up the field like he's beaten him. It's a bull rush, and then he releases to try and get a lead block. You want the defensive lineman in the backfield for a screen so that they can't redirect to make the tackle on the running back. Marked it back a yard, so call it second and three. Mason. And a good run for the first down for Trey Mason. Well, it's already been a good work day for Zach Kalaros when you could say in a quarter of football you've passed Jeff Garcia, Kenny Plain, wow. and Jackie Parker on the all-time passing list. That's pretty good company. That's, yeah, that's quite the list. Back on track or on track, maybe. In that first quarter. Bumps out of the pocket. And he'll pull that away. Got to make a mistake there. That deep in Saskatchewan territory, he'll 
reload for second and ten. Yeah, good decision there. Just like Kyron Moore. Kyron Moore letting the ball bounce was a good decision. He was inside the ten yard line on that part return. He didn't get the bounce he wanted into the end zone, so they start in bad field position. Another good decision by Zach Kolaris right there to throw it away, not take a big loss or force a throw that might be picked off when you're in minus territory. They were five for 19 against Winnipeg on second down conversions. Three for six so far today. Stands in, fires, and got Kyra Moore for a first down across the 30 yard line. Small window, but he. Found more for 11. This is another way that Saskatchewan will try and contain Micah Johnson in the middle. They're going to use Cameron Marshall to help. He'll step in, and whether it's Philip Blake in this case right here or on the other side, Josiah St. John, if that fullback can step or tailback can step up and help out, Zach Kolaros has more time. He can throw those crossing routes in the intermediate to deep zones. Nice blocking up front, keep four away from Clark. <laughs> Watford in the game, and he's going to take off. That's why he's in the game, and he'll run for a first down, getting outside. Ten yard run. His 18th run of the year now, up to 93 yards. Watford. Drew in the contain man for the Calgary Stampeders with the zone read play. Executes very nicely. There's contain, and he goes with Trey Mason. Out around the corner goes David Watford. I think that was Brandon Smith coming off the edge. Well, they call it second and inches here. And Trey Mason will get the inches necessary. And Stephen McAdoo's got a couple of decisions to make against a real good D line. And there's a couple of ways when you've got young interior offensive linemen to try and still be productive, even though you might be a little bit outmanned as far as experience goes. One of them is the run game, keeping the balance in the offense. The other is the quick game. And then at some point, Philip Blake and Josiah St. John are going to have to step up and beat their man. They've been playing well so far. Last week, Riders had 170 net yards. They have 170 net yards. Polaro's in trouble, and there's another throwaway to make sure he doesn't lose yardage. Gene Fodder's in hot pursuit that time. When I, when I talked about Brendan Labatt, and I know we're, we're emphasizing this a little bit here early in this game because it's such an intriguing matchup to me. Watch Brendan Labatt help both his guards. He steps up here to make sure he helps Blake first, then slides over to Josiah St. John. That gave Kalaros just enough time, and then he ended up scrambling out, made a good decision again to throw it out of bounds. Five-time All-CFL, eight-time Western All-Star. Flag comes down, pass is caught by Evans. Close to another first down, but again, flags down. Looks like Saskatchewan may be called for procedure. Offside, Saskatchewan, number 87. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Patrick Lavoie draws the flag, and they'll march back five. Well, Stephon Claybrooks here, is this a chance to send the house or do you rush for and make Kalaros throw it underneath in this situation? Stamps with two sacks in the game, just one in the first two meetings against Saskatchewan. Four-man rush, yeah. pocket collapsing, it's three sacks on the day. That's why Calgary is a top-ranked defense. We're watching two top-ranked defenses tonight, but Calgary's top-ranked because you can do both. Drop everybody, send four, and still get the pressure. Well, there's a flag on the play, and I was going to say... Illegal contact on the receiver. Calgary, number 29. It's a 10-yard penalty. Remains second down. Boy, that's Jamar a big Wall. penalty. Jamar Wall gets called on second and 15 and gives Saskatchewan a fresh set of downs. 
take a look. There's Wall right there. Ten yard penalty for illegal contact. Well past the five. Looked like he went to jam him and then he tripped over his leg. It's LeBlanc that got tripped up. And the pass caught. Williams Lambert loose. And dropped down at the 40 yard line by Brandon Smith. But remember, this drive started back inside the Saskatchewan 10 yard line. And, and keep in mind those good decisions that Zach Kolaris has made in this drive because they're climbing out of the hole now. This is a good play by Williams Lambert to make his one tackler miss and continue down the sideline for those yards after catch. But a couple of throwaways on first down by Kolaris. It started with a good decision from Kyra Moore, even though he didn't get the bounce. They're adding up. And they're getting out of the hole. Well, they're way out of the hole now. Started at the seven. Now they're in scoring range at the Calgary 40. And Great Mason pounds to the 35. And we're seeing balance in the play call. Little Trey Mason. A wrinkle with David Watford yep. on the ride in the side. And Kalara's finding the quick game if he feels pressure. 11th play of the drive coming up. <laughs> Rough Riders have had the football for over five minutes more than Calgary so far in this first half. Throws another strike to LeBlanc at the 40. That's right at the first down. Let's see if, where they spotted it is another First down for the Rough Riders. Well, Kim Murphy wants to wants to call the chains out to confirm that. They'll measure it. Micah Johnson was trying to get to the sideline. Looked like he may have been nicked on the play or looking for a substitution anyway. Thought that if Lavoie got beyond the 30 or inside the 30, it was enough. Looks and it, like is. it is. Yeah. And that measurement gave Johnson enough time to shake off whatever it was that was bothering him. And he's back in there. Boy, this is some drive. Rough Riders have had the ball for over seven minutes. Shoots him and it falls incomplete. Closest man to it, Siante Evans, the all star on the corner for Calgary. Yeah, I was just about to say before the snap of that ball that we've seen some real good decisions by Kolaros on the drive. One of the reasons it has been a seven minute or good play calling. And you're in scoring position right now on the road. So you don't want to make that mistake at this point in plus territory. Can they extend this impressive drive? Second and ten. Five receivers out. Not this time. Whoa. They're going to rule that Law did get him down. There is a flag on the play for Darrell Law with the sack, which would be his second of the game. And it does look like it's against Holding. Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, number 58. A penalty is declined. It'll be third down. Yeah. So the third sack of the half for the Stampeders puts an end to the drive. There he is right there, Cordero Law, right off the edge. Spin move inside. Claris' knee must have touched. Yeah, just at the end. He looked like he almost survived it. And now Lowther from 49 out. There's a little more pressure on him. And a 50 the other way in the first quarter. 49 up. And good again. Boy, the kickers in this league have been something this year. Lowther hits another. 
And it's a six point Rough Rider lead. Charo to the Great Cup continues next week, Friday Night Football. Another live mic broadcast. Stampeders and Blue Bombers. And depending on what happens here, yeah. enormous implications perhaps in that game. It's the action 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on TSN 1 and 4. We don't have 64 different variables anymore <laughs> after BC last night, but there's still a lot of them. Well, and, and the biggest one for this game is the fact that Saskatchewan can still finish first in the division and get the bye to the final. Calgary wins this game here tonight, and they take first place for the third straight year in a row. Riders likely need another win to get home field nailed down, but again, could finish first. Second down, Mitchell over the middle, and a knockdown there, Ed Geedy with the knockdown, his ninth of the year. And the punt team has to come on for Calgary as we hit the three-minute warning. The Riders have been sharp on offense, and Ed Geedy gets the Calgary offense off the field. Three minutes to halftime, and coming up, we'll talk about the surprising success of the Riders' offense throwing against the top defense in the CFL, and more reaction to the suspension of Charleston Hughes after it looked like initially he was going to be allowed to play in this game. Back to Calgary, to Chris and Glenn. Thank you, Rod. It's third down here, and Kyron Moore awaiting a punt from Rob Maver. Sharon Maver got it away and Moore at the Saskatchewan 25. 46 yard punt in. Good downfield cover as Moore is swarmed at the 30. Well, it's been a good first half for Zach Kalaros. Well, when you compare his numbers against Bo Levi Mitchell's, big difference. 182 yards passing for Zach, 48 for Mitchell. Four of seven for the Stamps QB. That last possession, 15 plays over eight minutes, but they did settle for three. The late handoff there, and Trey Mason doesn't get very far. Talked about the changes for Calgary. Lots of changes for Saskatchewan as well, as you mentioned. There's Charleston Hughes. They'll talk more about Hughes at halftime. Mikhail Brooks also out, so Magic starts for him. Williams Lambert is back, but Bailey and Shaw are out. And then we've broken down the offensive line in the matchup, one of the key matchups tonight. have on second and nine. Calgary rushes four. Dumped over the middle. Knocked down and caught. Cameron Marshall found it as that ball stayed up in the air. Looked like it was tipped three or four times before Marshall finds it. And it's a first down. <laughs> Jamar Wall shaking his head going, how did I miss that? First of all, a good play to tip it up in the air by Jameer Thurman. Bounces off the top of Lavoie's helmet. And Cameron Marshall kicks it around a couple times until he finds the handle. I think it was touched five times before it was secured by Marshall. And that catch is made. There's Katie Cannon making his first catch in the Canadian Football League out of Baylor. The number three receiver in Baylor team history. Well, let's go. Let's go back and count exactly how many hands and heads and bodies this football There's touches. One, one two, two, tip there, off three, the helmet, off three, a header, four, five, <laughs> and the sixth attempt. Marshall got the head. Has got here. Lavoie wrestled to the turf by Emmanuel Davis. Another first down. 
Got to be good to be lucky, and uh, that's a fortunate catch. Yeah, it's a big move by Saskatchewan, though, to get Philip Blake, and he started right away. I mean, one practice, and Blake was up there at left guard, and Patrick Lavoie, I thought it might have been the key to the yep. to the trade because he can play tight end, help in the run game, and he knows the league so well in those key second down situations. Knows the way to the Great Cup, too. Yeah. Three receivers stacked to the near side. Handed off to Marshall. Straight ahead to the 35-yard line. Rough Riders did break through for a touchdown on their third possession of the game, but they've settled for three field goals so far. Will they take three more here? Can Chris Jones get a bigger chunk in this final minute? Sided first half passing yards. Second and five, Marshall again with a cut to first down. And he'll plow down to the 23 yard line. They've got time for two or three plays, you'd think. Check out Patrick Lebois coming from the backside, and then he's going to get the seal block here so that Marshall can get that first down. Timeout, Saskatchewan. Timeout. Just enough of James Vodders. Drove him inside. Gave his tail back some room. Have time for two here before a field goal or? See how they handle this. I uh, you think you gotta take a shot and kick the field goal if it doesn't work. 34th offensive play in the first half for the Rough Riders. They're gonna take that shot into the corner incomplete. One and Cannon again up against Siante Evans. Cannon with 4 4 speed. And so they've got time for another play. Yeah, I, I still think you, that, that's the way. I mean, if, if you're gonna take a shot, throw it to the to the widest guy, so it's the one-on-one, -on -one, and it was Siante Evans who was playing way deep off him, tried to get him on a double move, did get him turned. If that ball was thrown to the inside, he might have had a shot at it. What you can't do is a lot of dancing at this point. Now he's gonna be a slow developing play. Gonna be another shot. Evans, jump ball, can't make the catch. And the field goal unit will come on. Well, a better throw on that one by Kalara. See, he missed, he missed on the cannon throw the previous play. This one was the outside so that Robertson couldn't get a shot at it. He wanted to protect against the in interception and not getting any points out of this drive. Throw it to that outside shoulder, and if Shaq Evans makes the miraculous catch, then they get it. If not, field goal team out there. Wow, they're now 48 to 53 on the year. Looking for his fourth of the opening half. And he's got that. And it will be a nine-point lead at halftime here at McMahon as Chris Jones offense is back on target. Good first half here between these two arch rivals. Halftime, let's head to the panel. Man. First, the biggest surprise, the difference in offense. 219 passing yards to 48 in favor of Saskatchewan. Three catches, 67 yards for Jordan Williams-Lambert. Standing by with Jermaine Franklin. Jordan, what a difference a week makes. Uh, after being set out last week, you guys put up over 200 yards passing, and you're up by nine. What is the difference? Uh, just an emphasis on coming out strong, you know, being enthusiastic, bringing the energy. I think uh, once, you know, the offense is going, I think the team feeds on our energy, and we're able to, you know, collaborate and, you know, I guess contribute for each other. And once we're all, we're firing on all cylinders, offense, defense, special teams, I think we're a hard team to beat. And what will be the key to continue this play in the second half? Just consistency, you know, uh, limited mistakes, coming out, continuing to play, and find a way to finish the game. Thanks for this. Thank you. Jordan Williams-Lambert, big half so far. Trey Mason, he's got a touchdown for that Saskatchewan offense.
looking to stay in the mix, possibly for first in the West. They need to win. They're up by nine. Second half about to begin. Second half of this huge Western showdown. Rough Riders with the nine-point lead. Jermaine Franklin with Dave Dickinson. Dave, just 91 total yards for the offense. Uh, what needs to occur in the second half for you guys to have more production? Uh, we need the ball, first off. We need the ball. We need to stay on the field. But, uh, they listen, they, they worked us over pretty good in the first half. We're still in the game, though. We're down by nine. Let's see if we can make it happen. You mentioned you need the ball. That would be on the defense. Uh, what needs to occur on that side of the ball to get off the field? Well, I mean, they, it's simple things, but they're playing well. Uh, guys, trust your eyes, see it and believe it, and go, go take the ball away. It's a simple game. Uh, uh, they're playing better than us, so let's see if we can turn the tables. Thanks for this. Thank you. Going to be an interesting second half. Big crowd on a beautiful night here at Big Man Stadium. And we want to send birthday greetings out to Roy Skeet, who celebrates his 90th birthday tonight. Roy's been a season ticket holder in Calgary since the 1947 season. Still shares season tickets, but tonight he's celebrating his birthday watching us and our hats are off to Roy Skeet on his big 90th birthday. Second half underway as Lowther sends it downfield and Romar Morris heads north. Makes a couple miss and still gets stopped short of the 30-yard line. Well, if you thought the temperature during the game was, was high, it got even hotter as the players left at the end of the first half. Yeah, Micah Johnson wanted to take on the Saskatchewan offensive line, like all of them. As they were going off together, they got John back and forth, and then someone said something, and he almost turned around and chased him down the tunnel. Yeah, it's been quite the battle in the trenches. It's going to be an interesting second half. Oh, yeah. Sam Stern. Number 27, Mitchell trying to stretch it out, and they get a flag. Some bumping there. Jawan Prescott's in the intended target. Pass interference against the Rough Riders. Pass interference, Saskatchewan, number 42. Point of foul, automatic first down, Calgary. Yeah, Derek Moncrief, he was running with them. Looked like he didn't really have to do this. Moncrief. Right here. Had pretty good position on him. He didn't really have to give him that shove as he was cutting to the football. I'm not sure Breskison even saw the ball. 20-yard penalty. By the way, the Stampeders with two offensive touchdowns in the first half of their last three games, and both were one play touchdown plays off turnovers. So it's been a while in the first half since Bo Levi Mitchell's been able to sustain a drive, and they only stacked up six first downs in that first half. First and ten, Mitchell rolling, completes the pass, and Marquis Ambles is into Saskatchewan territory. That's a first down at the Rough Rider 50. Ambles just over 100 yards coming from the backside, the short side, but when Bo Levi Mitchell negotiates the, the pocket here and, and bounces outside a little bit, he's finding him on this crossing route. Finds a little hole. That's a long way for Ed Ganey to try and track him all the way across the field. One of the toughest routes to actually cover as a defensive back is that long crossing route. If the quarterback has time, it's almost impossible. Fifth different receiver now. Pitch to Morris. Like he had a little trouble with ball security there and ends up getting dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two. Luches Purefoy, Chris, made that play. He steps up and cuts it off. And if you can force a running back to chop his feet, try and find a new route, try and find another direction, you, the rest of your of your help can get there. He's going to just step up and, and, and cut this off before it gets started. Quick close to beat the two blockers out front. Second and 12. Morris out of the backfield, and he's got a little bit of room. 
stopped down at the 36, but that's a Calgary first down. Everybody sat on Chris Matthews. Riders defensively had three defenders to that short side of the field, or to the wide side of the field, and, and Chris Matthews ran a post route right, right into the middle, and he drew all three defenders with him. That's why Morris, who has a kick return in the first half for a touchdown, had so much room to go get that first down. So the Stampeders putting a drive together. Don Jackson checks in. William Longley in this offensive formation. It is Jackson straight ahead. And Jackson taken down. Eddie Steele on the tackle. About five for Jackson, who had 45 in the first half. Sam Peters with 277 and 230 net yards in their last two games, two of their lowest four performances of the year. And at the half on pace for even lower here tonight. Quick hitter, there's a completion. And Breskison's got another first down. So the Sam Peters are on the move here and into the red zone. Juan Breskison. Coming from that two receiver spot, trips to the field or three receivers and watch how they just change motion there and catches Ed Ganey's eyes. As soon as the one receiver goes outside, Ganey follows him, just two steps, takes him out of position. 15 yard gain for Breskison. With all the injuries, Breskison actually the most receiving yards of anybody in the Calgary lineup. First catch for him for 15, swing it out, Ambles. And Marquise Ambles kept his feet. What a play. Lunging for the cone, but they're going to rule him out at the three. Wow, what a play by Ambles for 14. It'll be first and goal. Oh, Levi Mitchell puts this out in front of Ambles. This, this looks like a quick check down throw but the accuracy is so important so that he can keep his eyes on the defender and make that first tackle miss and off inside not going anywhere willie jefferson on the scene to contain don jackson seen it many times chris when a quarterback throws that swing ball just a little bit behind the, the running back or the receiver he has to turn and now the defender has a clean shot at him but when Ambles caught that he had his eyes on Kresden Butler could make him mix and miss and that's why they're on the doorstep trying to cap an impressive opening drive here in the third quarter second and goal from the four after losing a yard back of the end zone Durant touchdown Lamar Durant Touchdown of the year for La Marvelous. Canadian Football League field is so big, it's so wide, the end zones are deep. That wide receiver comes down in his split and then just heads to the corner where there's a lot of field to cover in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Durant gets in behind coverage, touchdown Calgary. Well, the first time that Stampeder offense has looked like a 12-3 team. Nine plays, 81 yards. Now they go for two. Trying to make it a one-point game. Flag comes down. Mitchell, that hit the upright incomplete. Or was that Willie Jefferson, who's about as tall as the upright? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, a flag down. Let's see what the flag's all about. Could stand under the upright and hold his hand up and touch it, I'm sure. Looked like there was early movement on the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure who moved first. Looks like Calgary's going to get another shot at this. Chris Jones wants the Popeye team in, or muscle team or strong team offside sure. Saskatchewan number 47 half the distance of the goal will retry the convert Sam McGuavin offside so they move it half the distance and now does Calgary try and punch it in on the run Ambles 
in motion. Don Jackson the other way. He's got two, and it's a one-point Saskatchewan lead. Well, they made some adjustments at halftime, and they come out and ride the length of the field for a touchdown. Lamar Durant, different celebration, one-point game. On the touchdown drive, Bowley by Mitchell, five for five, 59 yards on the touchdown connection to Lamar Durant. Out of SFU. I <laughs> ran a nice row, that touchdown. Here's Lucia's Purifoy with a return. All the way to the 45-yard line. 38 on the return. Patrick levels the tackle. They get a touchdown from Durant. They get a two-point convert from Don Jackson. And Calgary gets within one of Saskatchewan. Well, let's go back to that touchdown and put the spotlight on Lamar Durant. Usually you see a wide receiver out there by the numbers, but you could see how far Durant comes inside. Now he makes an inside move on Creston Butler and then heads to the corner. And when he does that, look at all the room he has to get some separation. Creston Butler jumps the inside move and now he's in big trouble and trying to chase. Great route running by Lamar Durant. See how Zach Caleros responds. Little play action fake, and Patrick Lewis is contained there. Jabbar Wall was waiting for him at the line of scrimmage. No gain, second and ten. You know, and I would say through that first half that one of the storylines that we talked about and set up early was the interior of the offensive line. I think they played very well. Philip Blake, Brendan Labatt, Josiah St. John. Having said that, Micah Johnson has one sack in this one tonight. But they've done more than hold their own when Zach Caleros is up there over 200 yards passing in the first half. Attack at 219. Four-man rush again. Throws that. And it's caught. Kyron Moore holds on with Siante. Excuse me, Siante Evans and Alex Singleton around. We've, we've covered a lot of Ryder games over the last month and a half, and it seems to me that Zach Kolaris is, is stepping into his throws more than I've seen him all year long. I mean, just take a nice look here as he steps into that, delivers it with confidence, tight spiral, down and away, so only Kyron Moore has a shot at it. Always that connection between protection and quarterback confidence. Great run by Cam Marshall down into Calgary territory. And it's part of the story here. They're, they're doing this on offense against the best defense in the league. And they're a defense with, with everybody in the lineup. Let's take a look at the trench war that's going on between Micah Johnson and those guards. St. John with a block down on the Cameron Marshall run. I'm saying that that's a premier defensive tackle in the league in St. John. And Philip Blake right now are doing more than holding their own. Josiah his first game start of the year. Marshall again. And this time Jagarin Davis helps with the stop. Three yards for Marshall. And at the bottom of the pile. Devon Claybrooks. Derek Wigan. Devon Claybrooks in this situation, second and long, loves to run the twists up front. Just send four, because he believes the four he's got up there can get there. He doesn't have to send blitz. Derek Wiggins going to anchor in there in the middle from Queens. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'll find another SFU guy. Hang on. <laughs> Second down. There's a lot of the backfield, oh. and he got pushed back. Trey Roberson stonewalls him. Let's see where they mark it. It's going to be close to the first down. I see a six yard foot short. I see a six foot 189 stepping into Patrick Lavoie at 240. That's playing the corner spot. Fearless. Boy, he's been doing that physically oh. all year, hasn't he? That's a solid hit. 
That's that's a big man to Patrick Lavoie. That just it turned him away. They'll admire that in the film room this week. Oh yeah. They? Oh yeah. Uh oh, St. John down. Oh, this is a serious problem with the depth of the Saskatchewan offensive line already tested. Dan Clark, Darius Bladdock already on the injury list, and Braden Schramm, a second year man out of Calgary, well, is into the game. Brendan Labatt has been coaching him up all game, I'm sure. He's going to have to turn that up a notch. With the newcomer Shram right beside him now. Oh, it's a good sign that he's making his way off the field. He has to leave for three plays now. Let's take a look what happens. He's in the middle of your screen working on Johnson again. Picks up Cordero Law on the twist. Thinks Claybrooks loves to run, as I mentioned. And, well, it didn't look like maybe he just caught a cramp or cramp, something, yeah. taking a break, yeah. Third in the yard. Nick Marshall. Nick Marshall, short team. All right. 20 and 25 on third down. He's going to take the wide side of the field and get outside and run for a lot more than the one yard needed. The speedy Nick Marshall gets the edge and gets it down to the five yard line. About midseason, Nick Marshall went into coach Chris Jones and said, hey, we're having trouble in short yardage. Let me do it. And Jones said, you know what? Why not give it a shot? I don't think the games that I've covered in Saskatchewan that Nick Marshall's been stopped on a third and short or a goal line situation. I haven't seen it. Maybe it's happened. But I, it hasn't happened in a game that I covered, and he does that often. He'll try and find, in a third and one situation, a chance to get more if he can get outside. His longest run of the year, 27 yards. Seems to be some discussion on the field, and not sure what Kim Murphy's got. The video official has adjusted the yards to the eight-yard line. Okay, so they back it up to the eight, where it will be first and goal. So call it a 24-yard run on third and one for Nick Marshall. Calgary open the third quarter with a touchdown march. Rough Riders trying to answer back with the same. And they'll throw the screen that's not going to go anywhere. Great defense from the vet, Brandon Smith. That's what they missed last week against BC. Their first home loss of the season. And one that had a few people across the league maybe raise an eyebrow or two. Only because it was at home against BC who hadn't won here in McMahon Stadium since 2014. And that's taken nothing away from the BC Lions who have been on a roll of late and won again last night. But my eyebrows are raised whenever Calgary loses. Yeah, exactly. And Brandon Smith wasn't in the lineup. Second and goal, back at the 12. And an open target, but the block can't reach it. Hurry throw with the field goal unit has to come on. You know, you say that, and that's exactly what LeBlanc is thinking. Because you write up plays, and oftentimes you'll say, well, it's part, can, will they execute it? Will they cover it? The play was executed, it was written up well. It was wide open and wasn't executed properly by Kolaros. Just missed the throw. Partly because of the rush, but he just missed that one. Wow, they're 15 of 15 this year against Calgary. And add another to that. Here they go. A little scrap down at the line of scrimmage. Not sure if that's done yet. Another all-star caliber season for Willie Jefferson, but playing without his bookend defensive end meet. Charleston Hughes in this game with more on that. Let's go to the sidelines again. Here's Jermaine. 
Thanks, CC. You know, Willie Jefferson did tell me prior to the game that he expected to get a lot more attention from the Stampeders protection packages in the absence of Charleston Hughes. He also told me that he was more than ready for it, and he had faith in the guys that had to step up in Hughes' absence as well. That includes Chad Jeter. Now, Jeter actually is in the top three when it comes to fight club points. That's the name for the riders when they have uh, all-out effort plays. Also, Chris Jones told me that Jeter has outstanding athleticism. And if the next box to check to see is if he has the instinct to go along with it. Might have some different kind of fight club points here tonight yeah. based on what yeah. we've seen at the line of scrimmage. It's not been as bad with the Saskatchewan defense out there against the Calgary offense, but when the opposite happens, boy, it is a battle in the trenches. Ambles with a 15-yard catch. And a first down for the Stampeders. Down by four. Saskatchewan scored on six of seven possessions in the game. Over the middle and uh, another completion. There's Eric Rogers with a first down catch. And Bo is seven for seven in the second half. Little play action and right over the middle another drive going he got the last one going that ended with Lamar Durant that was just the fifth drive of the game for the Calgary offense the Durant touchdown drive and they had two of those five were two and out so the offense now starting to find some traction on the previous drive and this one first down rider 48 big to Jackson catch on that low delivery by Ambles and he has about three Found a lower price on tires? We'll match it, guaranteed. So the catch by Amble sets up second and seven. Rough Rider 45, so on the fringe of field goal range for Rene Paredes. Cut down, Rogers, the catch and more. Here's Eric Rogers down around the 18 yard line. That's a first down count. Requested Butler brings him to the turf. Different uh, Stampeder offense in the second half. This is called cover two man, Chris. This is the two deep guys right here, and underneath it's all man to man. And as they break out, you see right down at the bottom of your screen, all man to man, and it's Eric Rogers with a good inside move on Nick Marshall, 28 yard gain. William Longley back in the game. Big to Jackson, got some time. Going to Rogers end zone. play to take points off the board with Calgary in, in the score zone and Bully by Mitchell had all day in the pocket to hang back in there and throws it into a well covered Eric Rogers tries to get it to Rogers but Edom takes it away and stays in bounds second interception of the season and a huge play here in the third quarter Take over at the 25. Laros pumped one way, goes the other, and KD Cannon's got another get. How about that throw as he jumps? That's old, old school. Mid old school. Yeah, Sorry, exactly. Laros. Again, you just. It seems to me that he's throwing with so much more confidence tonight than we've seen. Well, not just last week, but over the last month. Look at that in the air. Throwing a dart to Cannon. Cameron 
Marshall finds some room, and Marshall runs for a first down. Singleton and the delegate take him down, but that's a 13-yard run. Alex Singleton came into the game in 101 tackles. Adds to it here, but not until Marshall on the zone read play. Great job there, breaking the tackle of Jamar Wall. Gets wrapped up by Adelike, and, and Singleton cleans him up. Fresh legs for Marshall, five carries, 77 yards. Should be the final play. Misdirection coming back this way. And Marshall just got pulled down by the ankles. That saves some further damage to Garrett Davis. Just held on, but Marshall has Saskatchewan in Calgary territory. 22-18 the score. And a turnover by the Rough Riders that they're trying to turn into more points. Big difference in the game suits might be that turnover. Well, that's the first turnover of the game. And when you go back, this is game three between these two teams. The first game, Calgary wins it. They took advantage of early turnovers in the first quarter of that game and hung on to a lead. In the second game, the script was switched. Saskatchewan took advantage of Calgary turnovers. In fact, there was a pick six by Nick Marshall. Toby Antigua had a pick six. So the turnovers aren't part of this story in game three until that one right there, but they're not the major story. These are just two teams going head to head. Yeah, this has been the best game of the three and what you hope for when the top two records in the league collide. Riders trying to add some fuel to their first place aspirations. They held down a whole playoff spot. Here's Caleros trying to outrun Jaguar Davis who tracks him down. Four yards for Calaros there, second and six upcoming. But this kind of fuels that feeling most people have who follow the league that if this team gets offense, this team could be as good course. as anybody. Yeah, as good as anybody. Slotted McMahon, second and six. A little push there and a catch made by Lambert, who got a little separation. Another example of two men here. Here's the receiver in Williams Lambert. You're going to see as this develops, there's a deep man. It's Jameer Thurman, the linebacker, that's trying to get up over the top to help Brandon Smith. That's why Smith is underneath his receiver. Well, Zach Kalaros recognizes that. He puts it over Smith's head and drops it right in to Jordan Williams Lambert. And a challenge there. I noted that push, but on the replay, it didn't look like much, but Dave Dickinson wants Kim Murphy and the command center to have another look. Is that offensive pass interference? Today it'll be the BC Lions at Mosaic to face the Rough Riders. Still awaiting the verdict. Dave Dickinson's challenged six times this year. He's won five of them. There's a little issue with the communication here. You know, it's, it's very similar to the one last night that we saw with the Lions in Edmonton, but it, the, the question is, does it push After Brendan review. Smith? The ruling on the field is overturned. We have pass interference. Saskatchewan, number 84. It's a 10 yard penalty. He's second down. Boy, this is this is in a real gray area one here. And, for, and, and the only reason subtle. I say that, it, yeah, it's subtle because we saw the push. You saw the push and make, and make note of it. There they are right there. You saw it and you made note of it live. The question is, does Smith get really rocked to a point where it affects his chance to get to the ball? I thought the ball was way early in his arrival. The problem he had is when he tried to pivot around and turn. 
And the reason I say that's a questionable one is because it sets a precedent now that yeah. those little bumps, those little touches and pushes, subtle one where the receiver gives a little push or the DB gives a little grab, I think you got to let the players decide those. I mean, I saw it. You saw it. They overturned it. Okay, but it sets a precedent. That means it's second and 16 here. Over the middle, pass is caught at the first down stick for Shaq Evans. Wilkerson still trying to rip it out. And you better be careful or that could be flagged. Awaiting the spot and the signal that uh, it is a first down. That might have been Zach Kolaris' best throw this year. I mean, he he gets he gets back there after the overturn and the penalty and throws it right to the first down marker and guns it in there at 262 yards on the night going again completing another and KD Cannon's got another catch and a few words for Siante Evans and Micah Johnson's got to get a rest here. This offensive line has given Kalaros time to step into these throws because these are throws in the danger area, dig routes, routes that are coming into the middle of the field where there's lots of defenders. You have to be accurate. You have to put some heat on it. You have to get it there. They're holding off Micah Johnson this second half. And a three catches, 44 here to, in this big showdown game. Time for Kalaros. He's going to throw on the run and complete another to Cannon. Cannon feeling it. Another rough rider first down at the five. One hundred ninety-five yards, twenty or one hundred ninety-five catches over three thousand yards for Cannon and Baylor. Got some playing time last week, Chris, and you see Siante Evans lowering that left shoulder coming in. Whoop. Fly by there. Got to keep your head up when you're going in for a tackle. Boy, Zach Kolaris has made some good decisions in this football game. KD Cannon is a keeper. One for three in the red zone. First and goal for the four. Watford is the quarterback. Marshall the ball carrier. And Marshall down around the one. So Cameron Marshall, the ball carrier. Does Nick Marshall come in now to yep. take it the rest of the way? Rough Riders going to the Marshall plan here. <laughs> and an injured Calgary Stampeder. And that's Derek Wigan. Just back after missing the last two. He had come in to give Micah Johnson a rest. And Junior Turner will come back onto the field. And while they Ten to Derek Wigan will step aside here in the fourth quarter. Wait to nail it down. But right now it's the Rough Riders in control. Second and goal. Nick Marshall straight ahead. And is he in? No signal. And they're still not sure. Ref Camp showing you how chaotic it can be. Okay, well, there's the first time. As I said, the games that we've covered, I don't think I've seen Nick Marshall miss in one of these plays. And it looks like he may have been stopped here. Junior Thurman, or Turner underneath, gets great penetration into the offensive line that pushes them back a little bit. And then take a look. Did he cross the plane? Can't see the ball from there. Yeah, they, the ball is about at the top of the, the, the number three. And it doesn't look like he got there, at least on that 
first angle. The officials on top of it. I don't think they've completely unpiled yet. Well, it, the ball you know, got by, stuck on his hip, and there was no yeah, and ability the, to extend. After the play, we have objectionable conduct. Oh. Number four, Calgary. It'll be first down, Saskatchewan, on the one-yard line. Well, that's a costly penalty. Third and a yard, or first and goal. And well, after the whistle call, he's been fired up all game since the fight. You saw him go off at halftime and lost his composure on the goal line on third down. Huge penalty. Gives the Rough Riders three shots now. Marshall only needs one. Touchdown. Nick Marshall's got his fourth touchdown. Offensively this year. And it's a two-score lead for the visitors. Well, you know, even if you're you're gearing up and, and your defense is is bowing its neck for a goal line stand, a penalty like that takes the wind right out of your sails. It's it's a, almost impossible to regroup from it. And I'm not putting that all on Johnson, but bad penalty to take right there. They got the Saskatchewan offensive line have got it's got under their his skin a little bit and he lost his composure. That's an 11 play 85 yard drive. And Lowther adds the convert great balance on that Saskatchewan offense of the game. 124 yards rushing. And Calaro's 295 yards passing. And they've now scored on seven of eight possessions. Well, Dave Dickinson said it at halftime to Jermaine, basically saying, we, you know, our offense needs to get going. Yeah, but we need the ball. And they're taking it to us because Saskatchewan's got the ball. They're winning the time of possession in a big way. Edmonton, the only team that had put over 400 yards on the Calgary defense this year in the Labor Day rematch, 462, but the Rough Riders almost there at 396 with plenty of time left. So 10 14 to go. Last time Calgary lost two straight was last October. by Ed Geeney and company. So Mitchell was perfect in the second half until the interception in the end zone that might be the TSN turning point of the night. Yeah, and he had lots of time on that throw. I mean, he had time to, to wait it out, see if a receiver opened up. He thought he'd take a shot right to the back of the end zone, and Mike Adam with the big interception took points off the board. Eight and two in his career against Saskatchewan. Hands it off here inside. And not much there for Jackson. This is where Chris Jones often gets pretty creative defensively. He'll start to mix things up. You may see Toby Antigua in there that'll drop back to the safety spot. He'll bring Mike Edom down to the line of scrimmage. Switch it up. Four-man front then. Just a four-man rush, but Antigua almost got there. And that ball, oh, Adam came over the top, and that flag will be tossed. And shaking up on the play, Chris Matthews. Is that, is that Gini? Excuse me. I got there a, a split second too soon. 
Saskatchewan, number 15. Point of foul, automatic first down, Calgary. Called it point of foul, pass interference. I thought it may be unnecessary roughness because it was a high shot to the head, defenseless receiver, but that ball was way inside and, and not catchable. Either way, it's a first down. I mean, I'm not even I'm not even sure he was the target. So it was Edmund that drew the flag. It's a first down Calgary, and it's a handoff to Morris. And again, the ground game not generating much here. Judge making contact, and Morris contained. In fact, Morris rushing has minus yardage. Three carries minus one for Morris. Second down. That catch is made over the middle. Eric Rogers secures that in Rough Rider territory. Eric Rogers just kind of finding a hole here. He sees the zone, sits in it, and Mo throws him open. Fourth catch for Rogers. First down, Ryder 45. They'll swing it out to Ambles. Got a block. Nearly had the crease. Gets to the 35 and is close to another Calgary first down. Yeah, there's lots of time left in this football no game. There's, there's no way is this game over yet. And this is a quarterback at the helm right now for Calgary that, as I mentioned off the top, his last 26 starts only lost two games here at McMahon Stadium. One was last week against the BC Lions. Just three second half points in that game. Yeah, he's not done yet, though, I don't think. George Adich here, and they'll plow for the first down. Mitchell staying in. Sometimes it's Nick Arbuckle. And when Mitch Mitchell stays in, you, you sometimes expect that something else might be on, but they get the first down, and are already in field goal range. And don't really have to deviate from the game plan all that much. I mean, you can still include the run game in your play calling if you're Dave Dickinson. Bouncing around in the pocket. And gets out of the pocket, throws, and it's complete. Well, he showed some mobility there, and Ambles comes back for the football against Ed Gainey. That's the key. He comes back to the football, protects him, blocks out Ganey like a basketball player trying to rip down a rebound. First of all, the pocket management by Mitchell, outstanding. Buying himself an extra second, opening up a passing lane, and then Ambles does the rest, blocking out Ed Ganey. Jet Jeter is down in the training staff of the Rough Riders come out to attend to him. While Jeter gets attention from the athletic therapists of the Riders, will step aside, 6.33, left of the fourth. For the Shaw connection of the game, Shaw, super fan and proud sponsor of the CFL. Well, not a direct connection. <laughs> Six tips, touches, and bounces, including one off the helmet of Patrick Lova, right there, boink, and back up in the air, and tipped around, and Cameron Marshall was the connection of the game. Now they drop Saskatchewan offside. Looks like a free play. Incomplete. Intended for Matthews. Yeah, and you can see that, that Mitchell saw the flag, saw the early movement, and took a shot. At the free play, let it go deep because Matthews was completely covered. But he's 6'5". Offside, offside, Saskatchewan, number 35. Five-yard penalty, remain first down. Paul Dawson, uh, newcomer in the lineup, wearing number 35 on the defensive line for the Rough Riders in place of Jeter. The offside again. Yeah, I'm wondering. Here they come.
Time out, Calgary. Time out. Was that Chris Jones saying, someone go tell Dawson you got to give a full yard? Is that is that what I saw there? I'm not a lip reader officially. Newcomer out of TCU. I just let t Was he outside? <laughs> Go tell him. I think that's what he said. First and five, Mitchell over the middle, caught, Ambles, touchdown. And it's not done yet. Not a big man. Not with that guy. Just under six to go. And they're going to go for two. 13-yard touchdown connection. Just great composure from the quarterback position in Bo Levi Mitchell. Not phased by the two possession difference in the score. Not phased by the Saskatchewan offensive momentum. Stepped on the field for this drive and put it together. His pocket management outstanding, but the composure second to none. Second touchdown of the year for Amble. Second touchdown pass of the game for Mitchell, who has 33 on the year. Looking for two, and they have a oh, two there. Oh. What a terrific tackle by Ed Gady. They're going to say he was in. Saying was in. They really broke the plane despite a terrific defensive play. Take another look. The scoring plays have to be confirmed by video replay. Well, and the ball has to cross the plane, not the player. And that's why I didn't think when I watched it live sure. that he did cross the plane. The player can be across the line, but if the ball isn't, it's not a two-point convert or a touchdown. The official there right on the line said that Ambles was able to break the plane with the football, but the angle we gave you was not as direct. Oh, here's another one. You see one. it from this right down the line. Does he twist the ball enough to get it across? I don't. The previous score, the previous That's scoring play is under review by the command center. And the command center's taking another look, and I'd be surprised if that two-point convert is confirmed. What a play by Ed Geedy. Really was because it wasn't enough to to just hit Ambles. He had to keep driving and wrap it up. I don't think that ball crossed the plane. Ed Ganey's pleading his case to his teammates. I can tell you that. After automatic review by the command center, the ruling on the field is overturned. It was unsuccessful. The watermelons are still in season. And it's 29 24, not a three point game. But it is game on here in this terrific showdown between 12 and 3 and 10 and 6. What a drive by Bolivar Mitchell, who's now preparing for the next shot. He gets the football. Nine plays, 79 yards. Now, Zach Kolaros has put together five seven-minute drives, five-minute drives. If he does that one more time, it's game over. See if they can get it set up by Purifoy. Another good return. Beyond the 35, up to the 38-yard line for Luchez Purifoy. Again, if the Calgary Stampeders win this football game, they lock up first place in the division in the, On the, return. To the final. Holding. Saskatchewan, number 27. It's a 10 yard penalty. First down. That hurts. If they don't, and Saskatchewan wins, they can still finish first in the division. Penalty against Kevin Francis backs it up. They would have the tiebreaker against Calgary. 
Rough Riders start at their 20. And off to Marshall, trying to find some room in. Flattened there by Alex Singleton after a four-yard gain. Second down conversion, Zach Kolaros has looked as good as he's looked all year in this game tonight. And he's got a big one in front of him right now. Second and medium to long here, about six. A long six yards. He needs two or three first downs here to at least to try and drain some of that clock. the stop they were looking for. Jagera Davis makes two great decisions here. First of all, he executes the call defensively by Devon Claybrooks. Here he is right here. He executes it properly and he gets a little pressure on Zach Kolaros and that's enough to force a throw that was just too tough to complete on the sideline. But the second thing he does is after he hits him, he wraps him up carefully so that he doesn't take a roughing the passer call. Second two and out of the game for the Rough Riders first since the first quarter. Bartell. Tumbling puck comes down at the 50 and brought down immediately. Fans here thought there might have been no yards. Alex Gagne's been a demon all year. Came into the game with 20 special teams tackles among the league leaders. Game's on the line, one possession. I want to show you that Jagera Davis play just one more time. I mean, remember when Micah Johnson took the bad penalty, cost him seven points, look at that. Make sure you don't put it in the hands of the official. Say, okay, here we go. Got a battle going on. Great field position start. Mitchell 13 of 15 in the second half. And looking down, field for Durant, who can't catch up to that. Step for step was Kristen Butler. Now it goes from advantage offense and, and Bo Levi Mitchell on first down at midfield to advantage defense in second and long. Interesting decision to go the long wide field go route on first down there. and Rogers to the short side. He's looking this way though. And then out of the reach of Breskison, or excuse me, Ambles being watched by Ed Ganey and Saskatchewan gets it to and out. Ed Ganey stepped up, made some plays in this second half. Again, it's advantage defense once you get into second and long and, and a little bit high. Ambles couldn't reel that one in if it was thrown away possibly but two and out Zach Kolaros gets a chance to end this flags are still on a beautiful October night Beaver with the boot and he put the brakes on it and I don't know if Moore should have let that one try to bounce through nice touch by Maver 59 yards his second inside the 10 and should Moore have played that? It's a long field for the Rough Riders. Kyron Moore let one bounce around inside the 10 yard line. It was the right decision at the time. He didn't get the right bounce. I think he got anxious there. You got to let that go and see if it bounces into the end zone. No Calgary Stampeder was onside. They couldn't recover it. Now the Saskatchewan Rough Riders backed up into the shadow of their own goalpost. No guarantee it was going in, but. Uh, they, they can afford to concede the point. Ball in the flat. Williams Lambert gets away. Kolaris 
over 300 for the 20th time in his career. And now they've got some breathing room. And Jordan Williams Lambert just bailed out his buddy, Kyron Moore, because Lambert makes the catch to get him out of the hole. Because you have to have one play, one big play, whether it's a run or a catch and run, to get a chunk of yardage to get you out of that bad field position. Now, even if Saskatchewan has to punt, put their defense out there, they've got the room to do it. That's a monster play from Williams Lamb. Trey Roberson hurt on the play, the outstanding rookie corner getting attention along the sidelines, so they'll have to make some adjustments here. Patrick Levels likely to come in. And there is Levels. But that's a huge hole to get out of. Uh, big field position flip. And while they tend to Trey Roberson, we've been watching Micah Johnson, and he is really having trouble getting around. Uh, hobbled by some kind of injury and kind of walking straight legged at the moment. Hasn't been the same force here in the second half. Well, credit where credit's due. Josiah St. John, yep. big concern. He's anchored it in there. It's been, I think, the best game of the year for Zach Kolaris. He stepped into some throws, long drives, ate up the time of possession. What a big play by Williams Lambert. And I can tell you right now, Kyron Moore is, is over there going, hey, thanks, man, because <laughs> special teams meeting, I know I was going to get reprimanded for that one, but you bailed me out with a big catch and run. Saw it last night in both games, and, and in this game, how good are these playoff matchups going to be? <laughs> well, you know Winnipeg, BC, Edmonton, they're all watching this one. They're all affected by it. And on Marshall, Ja'Garrett Davis brought him down, ball popped loose, but it is immediately recovered by big Thaddeus Coleman, the right tackle. That ball come out, or was he down by contact it's already? Jagarrett, Jagarrett Davis. Timeout. Oh, that's Calgary. Timeout. That's down by contact. So about four. Second and six. Clock stopped. And now the. Calgary defense needs a stop. Alex Singleton is saying exactly that to his teammates right now. He just went up and down the line of scrimmage saying, guys, it's right now. He's coming on a run. There's a flag down as Evans has the catch in midfield. It would be a first down, but the Stampeders signaling it's going against the green and white. And it is. Right where Shaq Evans caught the ball, I'm wondering if it's... Pass interference. Saskatchewan, number one. Yeah. It's a 10-yard penalty. Remains second down. That was right kind of tucked in behind the Calgary bench, so it had to have happened on a push-off on Patrick Levels before he caught the ball. Chris Jones wants a look. He might challenge this if he doesn't think and he, he will. is, yeah. Got one to burn and maybe that's the time to do it with a first down possible near midfield that would really put a stranglehold on things. Well, you absolutely don't want to walk off the field with the game over with that challenge flag in your pocket. So yeah, got to burn it anyway key play if, if he can overturn the call. The problem with it is, even live, it was tucked so close to the Calgary bench. We're going to give you every angle we got, but they're calling they're calling a, a push-off by Shaq Evans. Saskatchewan is challenging the previous play. OPI will review the play. I'll take you back to the William Lambert push-off. Said sometimes it, it it opens a can of worms when when you 
overturn one that's in the gray area. From that angle, it looked like he, he gave him a pretty good shot with the left arm. The reason I say that is because it looked like Patrick Levels got pushed forward, jogging his step to try and stop his, his momentum. Chris Jones one for three in the challenges. This this was a bigger push, I believe, for Shaq Evans than the Jordan Williams Lambert subtle push on Brandon Smith. I'm not sure I would have overturned that one. This one after review, the ruling on the field stands: offensive pass interference. Yeah. Saskatchewan you know, I mean, is charged their final team timeout. Chris It'll Jones has down. to do it. got to take a shot at that challenge but you saw from that long angle the all 24 shot that there was a pretty good push from Shaq Evans not as Roberson out of the game so is Siante Evans I've got Emmanuel Davis on the other corner so that secondary has been revamped for Calgary on this big second and 16 four receivers wide side Valero's looking that way, and he's got the completion. Jordan Williams, Lambert. An enormous first down catch. Boy, is it ever. And Alex Singleton is going to be kicking himself for not getting a little more depth on this drop. But let's see an outstanding catch. Williams Lambert goes down, gets his arms underneath it so it doesn't touch the turf. He doesn't use the turf to assist him in the catch. And Alex Singleton was just a little bit shallow on his drop. A 21-yard gain for a first down. 20th catch against Calgary in three games. Goes over to talk with receiver coach Travis Moore. How close did Singleton get? Well, just watch out how, how he gets shallow here and he gets flat. And if he's a little bit deeper and drops straight into his zone, I guarantee you he's in the throwing lane and may knock this ball down. But see, he gets flat now. He's just basically tracking Davis and not getting any help to the deeper defensive back. But what a throw and catch. In a clutch situation. Williams Lambert, 5 for 113. He had 10 for 152 in a previous meeting against the Stampeders. Micah Johnson's had to go to the sidelines, and he can barely move on the Calgary bench. That one is in the turf. Last and chance. Complete to Williams Lambert, second and 10. Last chance for the Calgary defense. The clock stops. Kalaros converts this game over, and, and that that puts it on Devon Claybrooks. Now he's got depleted troops because of some injuries here tonight. Adam Burgers in that secondary. Roberson back now. Again, Emmanuel Davis has replaced Siante Evans. Second and ten, out of the backfield, it's Marshall with a cutback and a huge first down into Calgary territory. And that'll take a lot more time off the clock for the... That should pretty yep. much do it. And it, listen, even the all-stars in the game, it, at times, will make those little mistakes. Alex Singleton overruns this. He's got to stay inside out. He's got help here. If he stays inside, that tackle is made short of the first. But Alex Singleton gets a little bit high. He overruns Cameron Marshall. Nice cut back. First down. Will Kolaris have to throw another pass in the game? Marshall straight ahead. Singleton hanging on. Zach, 24 of 35, 352 yards. And a brilliant performance. No interceptions, no touchdowns. But they have generated a couple of majors on the ground. And nothing Calgary can do about the clock. 
second. Oh, he just got away. And Marshall dragged down short of the first down. Got third and two coming up. Do you just leave them out there to burn off 20 and maybe get the first down, or do you kick it away? May be discussing a field goal formation and kick to the corner. Drive that started at the six. Some critical second down conversions. A second and 16. And after some indecision, let's see who comes out. Looks like it's Bartell to punt. Well, there might be some time left. Now he's got to go for the block. Omar Morris awaiting at the five. Here they come. Bartell gets it away. Morris from the 10. Is contained just across the 15 yard line and just eight seconds to go. A lot of hang time there for Josh Bartell. Now it's prevent. Bo Levi Mitchell gonna throw it up. Hope he gets a pass interference call to get one more play at point of contact. Probably gotta try and cut this field in half with one play and hope to get PI. Reset the clock to read 10 seconds, please. Only get two seconds extra. 10 seconds so that on the clock. Extend yeah. it to two plays. Yeah, get two plays. Is Milt Stiegel in the house? <laughs> Milt would say that only happens once every generational player. Three-man rush, a lot of guys waiting. Underneath the red, and oh, a vicious hit by Edelman. There's a flag. <laughs> Not sure he's aware it's been flagged. Is that a 15-yard penalty or... A spot foul either way. It doesn't give Calgary that much real estate. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Saskatchewan, number 15. We we'll go 15 yards, automatic first down. Calgary. Adam is saying he hit with his shoulder pads, but I think football fans in North America understand that that's illegal in the game now. That's, Timer. That's the hurt play the from a couple the weeks ago. Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if it was seconds. his shoulder pad first. And well, this might be it. See this prevent look for Saskatchewan is is in layers. There's your last line of defense, just in case. Durant's got to come out for concussion protocol. Okay, they, the spotter is called the medical him spotter off. in the command center has removed number one from the game. And Richardson, Danny will come on for Calgary. Yeah, that's good. Good call under red. So there's there's your levels. There's another level here, level here, and then your last line. Well, this is it. The Hail Mary toss. Jump ball. No flags. Incomplete. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have beaten the stamps right here in Calgary. Time for the Nissan Titan player of the game brought to you by the Nissan Titan, official vehicle of the Canadian Football League. Best game of the year, and I don't care what the numbers say, I think he threw for more yards in another game, but this was his best. Zach Kalaz went 24 of 35, 352 yards. 
and put together long drives that kept the Calgary offense 